Hello and welcome to MedHeads, the podcast where we dissect the latest research and trends reshaping the healthcare landscape. Today, we're diving into a story that's both fascinating and deeply unsettling. The long-term mortality risks associated with severe acute respiratory syndrome, or SARS, following COVID-19, and how vaccines, once hailed as our saviors, may be playing an unexpected role in shaping these outcomes. This discussion is rooted in a groundbreaking study from Brazil, which tracked the long-term health outcomes of severe COVID survivors. What it reveals could have far-reaching implications, not just for public health policy, but for the trust we place in vaccines and other rapid response interventions during global crises. Grab a cup of coffee or your stethoscope. This one's going to be a deep dive. Let's start with some context. The COVID-19 pandemic upended every corner of our lives. For healthcare systems, it was a trial by fire. Hospitals were overwhelmed, ICU beds were in short supply, and the world was desperate for solutions. One of those solutions was the rapid development of COVID-19 vaccines. They were a triumph of modern science, rolled out at unprecedented speed in a race against time. The goal? To reduce the severity of illness, prevent hospitalizations, and save lives. And to a large extent, they did just that, at least in the short term. But now, as the pandemic shifts into a new phase, we're starting to see the long-term picture, and it's more complicated than we anticipated. The Brazilian study we're exploring today looked at patients who developed severe SARS during their COVID infection. These were people who had been hospitalized, often in the ICU, and who survived the immediate threat. What happened to them in the months and years after recovery is the focus of this research, and the results are eye-opening. So, what did the study find? First, let's talk about the immediate outcomes. For patients who survived severe SARS, the risk of death didn't end with their discharge from the hospital. In the medium term, about six months post-recovery, the mortality risk was still significantly elevated compared to the general population. Here's where it gets interesting. Among vaccinated patients, the risk of death during this medium-term period was 4 to 8% lower than for their unvaccinated peers. This aligns with what we've been told about vaccines. They reduce the risk of severe outcomes, including death, at least in the short run. But as the researchers extended their analysis to one year and beyond, the story changed dramatically. They found that vaccinated individuals had a 69 to 94 percent higher risk of death compared to unvaccinated survivors. Let me repeat that. Nearly double the risk of death in the long term for those who had received the vaccine. The authors propose a possible explanation for this reversal. The vaccines may have an indirect effect on the immune system, potentially altering how it responds to other health challenges over time. Could this make individuals more vulnerable to other diseases or complications? It's a hypothesis that demands further investigation, but it's one that could fundamentally reshape how we think about vaccine safety. This brings us to a tough question. Were the COVID-19 vaccines a gamble that didn't pay off? Let's not forget the context. When the vaccines were developed, the world was in a state of emergency. The priority was to prevent a catastrophic death toll during the acute phase of the pandemic. Vaccines were fast-tracked, bypassing the usual years-long safety trials. At the time, this was seen as a calculated risk, and for many, it seemed justified. But the findings of this study challenged that narrative. If the long-term risks of vaccination outweigh the short-term benefits, particularly for individuals who already face severe illness, then we need to reevaluate the trade-offs we made. The author's hypothesis about immune system changes adds weight to concerns that were raised early in the vaccine rollout, but largely dismissed at the time. Could the very intervention designed to protect us have unintended long-term consequences? To be clear, this study doesn't provide definitive answers. Observational studies like this one have inherent limitations. Factors like healthcare access, underlying conditions, and socioeconomic disparities could all influence the outcomes. However, the patterns observed here cannot and should not be ignored. So, what does this mean for healthcare providers and policymakers? First, it underscores the need for robust post-COVID care programs. The fact that mortality risks remain elevated for up to a year, and possibly longer, 
means that recovery doesn't end at discharge. Survivors of severe SARS need ongoing, multidisciplinary support to manage the long-term complications of their illness. Second, it highlights the importance of long-term vaccine safety monitoring. The rapid pace of vaccine development left little time for comprehensive safety studies before rollout. Now, with data like this emerging, it's clear that we need to revisit and refine our approach to vaccine development and evaluation. So, where do we go from here? The findings of this study should serve as a wake-up call. Science is an iterative process. We learn, we adapt, and we improve. If the vaccines we relied on during the pandemic carry long-term risks, we owe it to the public to investigate those risks thoroughly and transparently. This isn't about placing blame, it's about taking responsibility. Public trust in healthcare depends on openness and accountability. We need more research to confirm or refute these findings and to explore how vaccines might be adjusted to mitigate any long-term effects. For now, the best thing we can do is stay informed, ask tough questions, and advocate for a healthcare system that prioritizes both safety and efficacy in every intervention. That's it for today's episode of MedHeads. If you found this discussion valuable or if it challenged your thinking, please share it with your colleagues, leave us a review, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest in healthcare. Remember, MedHeads is brought to you by meducate.com.au, where health professionals go to stay informed and ahead of the curve. Until next time, stay curious, stay compassionate, and let's keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible in medicine.